Hello, um, in this video we'll talk about um, phasers. So what we have now is uh, the input voltage of our circuit is not going to be a constant current or a constant voltage. It's going to be an AC input that we can represent as a cosine function with some amplitude here, Vm, we call this the amplitude, and some, some frequency omega and some phase phi. So this is going to be now the input of our circuit, a function that is going to change with time uh, according to a cosine function. Uh, dealing with uh, circuits with inductors and capacitors with this type of input, uh, it's complicated if we want to find currents or voltages because we will have to solve differential equations. So we usually express this uh, in order to simplify uh, the calculations, we usually work with complex exponentials. So what we do is we take the real input that we are applying to the circuit, that's the cosine, and we add an imaginary part. So this we have the real input, then we add an imaginary part, uh, that in this case is J uh, Vm times a sine function. And using Euler's formula, we can express now the complex exponential in terms of the exponential function. So we have Vm times j omega t plus phi. And now we consider this one as the input of our circuit and our calculations are, are easier. But what we're going to do here is we're going to use phasers instead of using the, the formula of, of the complex exponential of the input. What we can do is we can take the expression for the complex exponential and express it in a different way just by separating the exponentials. So we have Vm times e to the j phi times e to the j omega t. This term here, e to the j omega t, um, is it, usually dropped from the representation, uh, from the phasor representation, and the reason for that is because it will appear in every current and it will appear in every voltage that we find. So we usually remove it because it's always going to be there. So it's something we know it's there, we just remove it from the representation. So if we remove the term e j omega t, then the function v of t can be described with two things, just a magnitude vm and a phase angle phi. So the phasor representation of, of V of t is going to be just some magnitude Vm and some phase phi in degrees. So V of t, this is the real function in time that we have, and this is the phasor representation of that function. If we go to the complex plane, where we have the imaginary and the real axis, we can think of the phasor as a vector with magnitude Vm and a phase phi. And that vector is rotating with constant angular speed omega. So as this vector is rotating here, its real part is changing according to a cosine function, just like our real function. So this is the phasor representation, some magnitude and some phase. And this is our cosine function with some magnitude, some amplitude there, and the same phase. <coughs> In this example, what, we're, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the phase of representation of this function. We get the amplitude, in this case it's 12, and we get the phase from the argument of the cosine. And the phase we get in radians. If we convert that to degrees, in this case we get minus 425. So the phasor of this function is just 12 with a phase of minus 425 degrees. As simple as that. So that's the phasor of a cosine function. Now what happens if we have a sine function? Let's say we have this function here, 18 times sine of 200t plus 0 0.07 radians. And we want to find the phase or representation of this function. The problem is we have a sine, not a cosine as before. So what we can do is we can convert the sine function into a cosine function by adding or subtracting 
uh, 90 degrees phase shift. So we have this sine function is equal to, this, to the cosine, but then we have to, in this case, uh, I'm subtracting a phase shift of 90 degrees, pi over 2. So now our function becomes 18 times cosine of 200t minus 1.5 radians. Now we have a cosine function and we can apply the same procedure as before in order to find the phaser. We get the amplitude, it's 18, we get the phase, minus 1.5 radians, we convert this to degrees and we get minus 85.9 degrees and now we can write the phaser for this function and it's going to be a magnitude of 18 with an angle of minus 85.9 degrees. And that's the phaser of this function that is uh, described as a sine in the time domain. Um, if we have the phaser and we want to go back to time, we just need the, the, the magnitude and we just need the phase to put that in the, in the cosine function. But now let's, let's, uh, let's see how useful a phaser can be. Let's say we have a phaser that is expressed like this. Some magnitude Vm and some phase phi. And we're going to take the derivative of this phaser with respect to time. If we take the derivative of V with respect to time, that is the derivative of Vm times Ej phi times Ej omega t. Vn times e to the j5 does not depend on time, so it's just a constant with respect to t. And then we have the, 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 to take the derivative of an exponential, and that's the exponential itself times the derivative of the exponent. In this case, it's just j omega. And the term that we have here is just our original phaser. The phaser we have here is the same phaser we get there. So the whole point of this is just that every time we take the derivative of a phaser with respect to time, that is equivalent of taking the phaser itself and multiplying it by j omega. So if we have to deal with differential equations, if we solve them with phasers, uh, the differential equation now becomes an algebraic equation. We don't need to solve differential equations anymore. So let's consider the case of a single inductor and let's say we have a voltage between its terminals that is a cosine function with some uh, amplitude Vm and some uh, frequency omega and we want to find the current flowing through the inductor. So this is the typical form uh, formula we have for the current and voltage in an inductor. We can find the voltage by taking the derivative of the current with respect to time and multiplying it by the inductance. But we're not going to do this calculation using the function in time. We're going to use phasers. So now we're going to write the same equation but now using phasers. So the phasor of the voltage is the inductance times the derivative of the phasor of the current with respect to time. Now we're going to use the fact that I just said before. The fact that every time we take the derivative of a phasor with respect to time, it's the phasor itself times j omega. So what we're going to do here is we're going to replace the derivative of the phasor of the current with the phasor itself times j omega. And now we don't have to solve any uh, differential equation. We can just find the voltage or the current from this equation, just like that. Now in this case something interesting here to note is that the relationship between the voltage and the current is just a constant. They kind of behave like resistances. So we call this number J omega L as the inductive reactance. And its units are ohms and it represents the opposition of the inductor to the flow of current. Just like we had with uh, the resistances for uh, the value of the resistance for, for a resistor. So now we can express the phasor of the voltage as this constant KL times the current. Looks familiar, right? Looks like 
um, ohms law for resistors. So now we can find the phasor of the current uh, by dividing the phasor of the voltage by XL. And we get here the value. Now, here we have the phasor of the input. We need to find the phasor of this function, and that is just the amplitude, Vm. And the phase is zero in this case because the value of phi is zero. Zero radians. That's why we get uh, zero degrees in the phasor. This is going to be the m with an angle of zero degrees divided by xl. xl is j omega l. But we can express uh, j omega l in polar coordinates. Uh, this is a purely imaginary number. The magnitude of this number is omega l and its phase is 90 degrees given by the by the constant j so the phasor of the current is going to be vm with an angle of zero degrees divided by xl that is omega l with an angle of 90 degrees now side note here every time we're dividing phasors if we have a phasor a let's say with an angle alpha in a phasor B with an angle beta, um, we can find the, the ratio of this or the division between of them. The magnitude of the result is going to be the division of the magnitudes and the angle of the result is going to be just a subtraction of the phases. So in this case, the magnitude is going to be, we just take both magnitudes and, and divide them just like normal division and we subtract the phases, 0 minus 90, and we get minus 90. And this is in amps. So this is the phasor of the current. Now we want to find the expression in time, the function in time. And this function is going to be, this is the amplitude, Vm over omega L. Then we put the cosine, omega T, same frequency as the input. Same frequency as the input. And now we include the phase of the phasor, in this case, minus pi over 2. And this is in amps, and that is the expression for the current in time. Now let's consider the case of a capacitor. And now we have the same type of voltage between the terminals of the capacitor, and we want to find uh, the current. So the phasor is the same, it's going to be Vm with an angle of 0 and we want to find the expression for the current. For a capacitor, the differential equation we have is that the current flowing through, uh, through a capacitor is the capacitance times the, the derivative of the voltage with respect to time. And we're going to work now with phasor. So, phasor of the current is equal to the capacitance times the derivative of the phasor of the voltage with respect to time. We're going to use the same fact here, replacing the derivative with just a multiplication by j omega. So now what we have is the current is going to be equal to the capacitance times the phasor of the voltage times j omega. We, we get rid of the, of the derivative. And we can rewrite this. We have the phasor of the current is equal to j omega c times the phasor of the voltage. And what we have is something similar as before. The relationship between current and voltage is, is a constant. And we call this constant um, xc is 1 over j omega c. And it is a, it's called a capacitive reactance. And its units are ohms as well. And it's the opposition of the capacitor to the flow of current. So it's kind of a resistor for the capacitor. So now we can express the current as v over xc. And uh, we can write xc in polar coordinates and that is going to be a magnitude of 1 over omega c with an angle of minus 90 degrees so now we can come back here and find the phasor of the current that is going to be the input vm here vm with an angle of 0 degrees divided by xc and the magnitude of xc is 1 over omega c and the angle is minus 90 degrees. So the final magnitude of the phasor of the current is going to be vn times omega c 
and the angle is going to be 0, minus, minus 90, and we get positive 90. And this is in amps. And now to find the expression in time, this is going to be, this is the, the amplitude omega CVM times the cosine of omega t. And omega is the same omega as the input. And then we include the phase plus pi over 2 amps. And that's the um, expression in time for the current. Just as a, as a note here, every time we have a complex number j, this number has a magnitude of 1 at an angle of 90 degrees. So if we have, let's say, some constant b times j, this complex number has a magnitude of b at an angle of 90 degrees. Or if we have 1 over bj for some value of b, this is just 1 over b is the magnitude and the angle is minus 90 degrees just in case you're not familiar uh, with J.